Welcome. Thanks for joining this webinar on how to use SAS within Microsoft Office. I am Nancy Call with the Education Practice at SAS Institute in support of teaching and academic research licenses. And I'm Phil Busby, Systems Engineer with SAS Education Practice. Today we will show how Office Analytics lets you use the power of SAS from a familiar interface. In introducing SAS Office Analytics, viewing SAS tables and running analyses using SAS in Microsoft Office, producing graphics ready for placement into a presentation, and sending content to others. So why is this beneficial for teaching and academic research purposes? SAS Office Analytics provides additional power in the familiar using Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, and Word. It offers wizard-driven report creation from a Microsoft Office tool. And for those doing academic research, you can take your SAS output and place publication-ready graphics into Microsoft Word for journal articles or Microsoft PowerPoint for presentations. <clears throat> so we realized the desire for professors to teach with case studies. We will use sales data from a fictional company called Appalachian Chocolates. The example will be an analysis of the top chocolate sales by region to determine where a new warehouse should be located in the United States to keep up with demand. So Philip, all to you. All right. So let's share my desktop here. And you should see a, an Excel spreadsheet now. Uh, this is Excel data. There's nothing special about it. It's you know, just a normal Excel spreadsheet. Uh, but with SAS Office Analytics, you should get this tab enabled on all of your Office products. This tab lets you view all of the tasks and, and various reports and pull in data from SAS. The tasks that come with it, a lot of which are the same exact tasks that you can see from Enterprise Guide. Uh, so let's use our Excel data and uh, get a frequency of, I don't know, let's figure out where all of our sales are coming from. Every row in this data set is going to be a transaction. So let's get some frequency of the type of transaction. Uh, this first screen is going to ask us which data we want to use. Uh, we can use the, we're going to use the data from Excel. We could use data from SAS. We'll do that later. Let's click OK. And we have this one column here, retail type. Let's analyze that. Let's drag that over to the right and drop it there. And we'll take all of the other data, uh, all of the other options as defaults and click Run now. This data goes off to SAS, and SAS should come back with some uh, frequencies for us. We can see from here that most of our frequencies are coming from retail stores. Uh, just a couple of them are coming from internet and catalog orders. Um, so let's go back to our data and uh, let's run some other reports now that we know that they're coming from retail stores. Uh, but let's, this time, instead of using data from Excel, let's open up from a SAS data set. Uh, we can click this button in the uh, top left, SAS data, and then we're given options of where to pull it from. Uh, we can pull it from our hard drive uh, as a SAS data set file or from remote servers if they happen to be there. Let's just click this table here. Uh, and the advantage of doing this is we can view it in our worksheet, only maybe a 1,000 records at a time. We can view them all, but if we only view 1,000 at a time, it's going to get beyond the limits that Excel has in the number of rows in a spreadsheet. So let's click OK. And here is all of the data from an Excel spreadsheet. We can page through this or go directly to a record if we know the, the number of it, 50,000. And there's the 50,000th row from it. Um, so this is useful. We can just go directly to a database. Um, that database could be an Oracle database or any other kind of database. Um, but let's run some reports on it. So let's uh, go back to tasks. And we're going to use the uh, summary tables wizard. The summary table wizard lets us view this like a pivot table uh, using the data that we've opened in SAS. And here we confirm that, yes, it's that data. We could filter it down if we needed to. 
Um, but on the next page, here we're going to select which data we want to analyze. We're going to click the Add button, and it's going to give, a, give us the numerical variables. Uh, we'll pick Revenue. On the right here, you'll see a preview. That's about what it's going to look like. It's not going to run the numbers just yet, but we can get a good impression of what it will look like. Uh, let's go to the next page. And across the top, we want to know uh, what kinds of sales, and maybe along the bottom, we want to know when, perhaps. Nope. We're going to do the same thing again. We'll click Add, and it's going to show us some variables, uh, variables from our table. And we'll click the retail type, just as before. And down the bottom, let's pick some time. So let's go uh, month and then year. You can see you can do multiple levels. But in the preview here, you can see that the order that I selected them happened to be uh, not what I intended. I don't want to do by month and then year. I want to do year and then month. So we can just rearrange these, select one and go down. And you can see as we reorder these by clicking these up and down arrows, the the levels change on the right in the preview. So that looks good. Let's click Next. Uh, we can change where the totals appear, if they're totals at all. Uh, we can get rid of some of them. Sure, they're gone. Um, and let's click Next. Everything looks good on our preview again. We could save these to a, a SAS data set if we wanted to. Um, the default is no, so we'll leave that how it is and click Next. We can change the title of this. Uh, it's going to show us a title on the page. Uh, what was this? This is retail type by year and month. Um, it'll also add the time we generated this report at the bottom. We could remove that if it's too much, but let's leave it there. It might come in useful someday. We clicked Finish, and it ran, and it comes back. Looks pretty good. There's a few things that I might want to change on this, but for the most part, the, the dollars look about right, um, but they're not dollars. They're, there's, there's a dollar sign. There could be anything. Let's put a dollar sign there. And also, I don't really like these, these labels here, so we'll get rid of those. If we want to rerun this report, we just click Modify up here at the top, and it's going to go through that same wizard again. Um, click Next, and remember this first page it used to have just some one one row at the top here because we hadn't selected the rows or columns, but now it has the whole preview. Let's get rid of those labels. Uh, let's get rid of the statistics labels. Yep, there. And to add a format, we go to this uh, this bar right here. We could type in the format if we knew it, or we could select browse. If we select browse, a uh, selector will come up. Uh, we know it's a currency, so let's select currency. And it's a dollar, so let's select dollar. And click OK. And there, it showed up right here. Uh, everything else looks good, so instead of going through the whole wizard again, we'll just click Finish. And there you can see the dollars came up, and the rows are, the, the labels on the row is now gone. So this looks good, but let's not forget that we were looking to put a warehouse somewhere. Um, now, let's go back to our data, and let's look for a task that will help us select where to put that warehouse. Now, we could go through here and go each go through each one at a, one at a time, but there's a task gallery right here. If we select this, a window will open up on the right that gives us a preview of each of those tasks and the kinds of output that it's going to output. Let's go down. Um, what's going to really help us with selecting where to put a warehouse? Uh, there's probably a map. A map would probably help. So we're going to use this map here. And just as before, we, select, we confirm which data we want to use. And click OK. Um, and uh, let's do a riser map. Risers will be useful in seeing which, which, uh, which state is giving us the most revenue. So we've selected that one, and then go to data. And a map needs two things. First, it needs the data that you want to chart, but it also needs the map itself. Uh, SAS comes with a lot of maps um, prepackaged. Um, they're an optional install, but you can make sure they're installed. And we're going to select the US. All of these, there, there's different maps here for different countries. Um, we're going to select the US. 
and we're going to say our state code variable should correspond to the states in the U.S. And we want to chart uh, those risers should go up based on uh, the revenue, the revenue right here. Uh, we'll take the defaults for everything else, but we could go into here and uh, give different colors for empty areas, change the colors around, do whatever we like. But let's click Run. And I'll close our gallery here. And here we have a map of the United States with uh, bars for revenue of each state. Uh, we can, we can, this is a three-dimensional map. We can hold down the Alt button and drag this up, and we can get a better view of this. Uh, and we can see that Oregon, and it looks like New York, are leading the charts in sales. Oregon has um, pretty good revenue. And here, oh, but it's actually Rhode Island. Um, if we hover over the bar, we can see which state region code it is, and it's Rhode Island. So we know that Rhode Island's probably our state uh, that we want to build this warehouse. Um, so let's right-click on this and go to Copy. And we can take this graphic right here, and if we have a Word doc already open, or it doesn't have to already be open, we can open it. Uh, but we can paste this directly in. And here this is the same graphic. We can shrink it down, format it so that the text wraps around it. And there we have a presentation ready graphic. We can also put this into PowerPoint. Same graphic. Uh, and there you have it. Um, I hope this was informative. Uh, here's Nancy. Thank you, Philip. So in conclusion, we're able to provide a few resources, um, th such as course materials, which are available from our SAS Global Academic Program, product information on our website, resources for teaching and academic research, and any questions, please contact me. Thanks for your time, and have a great day.